Good morning. Are, are you ready to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. We are so thankful. We are so glad that you're here today on January 7, 2024. It's a new year. It's a new time to renew your heart and mind to Jesus Christ and to allow him to be a witness in your life. Amen. Amen. So let's stand. We are going to go over a few announcements. Again, this is Youth Sunday. Our Youth Praise Band is going to lead us in worship. And then next week, I know you guys are preparing all week long fasting because this is a month of fasting for our uh, Youth To Go meal. Next Sunday, it's a cheesy chicken on rice meal. Amen. With some nacho cheese, some queso, I should say, provided by... Claudia and Julio, it'd be directly after service, so please help the youth. We are fundraising for Winterfest. We are just a couple minutes, a couple months away from Winterfest. To me, it feels like minutes. <laughs> a lot of planning and preparation taking place, and it, it's just coming quicker and quicker, but God is going to move in a mighty way. We are taking these students to a revival a revival of 10,000 plus people and the anointing of the, of the Lord of the Holy Spirit moves on that, on that mountain in Pigeon Forge. Amen? So your contributions today to the fundraisers, that goes to help pay for the van rentals. This year we're having to take three vans. Praise God. And so it goes to that. Amen? It goes to the cabin purchases. It goes to all the food because there's a lot of food that is, that is purchased for this event. Um, there's a lot of mouths to feed. Amen. We're so glad the families are with us today. And, and so, yeah, amen. We're so glad the families are with us. We're so glad each and every one are with us today. And so if our ushers can come, if our ushers would come, we're going to play a blessing over this offering today. I was going to have Susanna pray, but somebody else needs her undivided attention right now. Amen? He's got lungs of Pentecostal. Okay? I told him, are you going to worship with us today? And he said, yeah. So I encourage you to worship with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. And God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel in this house. And we allow your spirit to move, Lord Jesus. We allow your presence to be presence to be with us, Lord God. And we ask, Lord, that you minister through song, through word, Lord God, that you touch the lives of the hearts of the many that are here today. And God, bless this offering. Bless every aspect of it, Lord God, for your kingdom and for your glory, Lord God. And give us that discernment and wisdom we need to be, to be stewards of your finances for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you. And God, we set aside every distraction today, every concern, everything that might creep in right now to keep us from worshiping you. We just want your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
And God, I can't believe how you love me. 
church, sing this. Close your eyes and sing with your heart. How you love me, Lord. What a friend you are to me. Thank you, Jesus. Think about that. Worship team, come on. Like that's. A lot of time in practice, and it's an honor for me just to play drums with him. I feel like a teenager. <laughs> Amen. Y'all may be seated. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Our family overcome some sickness. If you've, have you got family that's been sick? You've been sick or you just know what I'm talking about. You want to say amen and raise that hand? God's so good to us. He brought us through it. To the other side, there was a rough patch there. Amen. There's a rough night or two. Might have been praying out loud like Job. Felt like the world was coming against me. But he's so good to us. Amen. So in 2024, my spirit has been challenged. And I want to challenge you today. This is the spirit challenge of 2024. No, it's not the Sprite challenge, if you know what I'm talking about. I had some of my youth participate in the Sprite challenge the other evening. It's where you drink a full 20-ounce bottle of Sprite and try not to burp. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we pulled the cell phones out and we took videos. It was funny. Amen. This ain't that. It's not the spirit challenge. I don't care what team you root for or how great of a champion you think your team is or what you think about your team. This ain't the spirit I'm talking about. The spirit I'm talking about is the one that's in you. It's a challenge of this year to pay attention to yourself. Our key verse for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. And I, as I was reading this, this is a passage where Paul is getting on to believers. He is bringing the hammer down. And he's calling out a church. And he's saying, don't. You understand who you are. So in 2024, I'm challenging you to pay attention who you are and who God has paid ransom for. Verse 19 of chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians says, and I'm going to, I feel like I want to speak how it is probably heard then. Because Jesus came into the temple to say this will not be a den of thieves, but a house of prayer. And he flipped over some tables and some righteousness. And I feel like this letter is a little bit of table flipping to get the believer to understand how to be more righteous. He says after he called them out for their sexual immorality and sinful life. I'm not calling you out specifically, but I'm saying the sin that is in our life has to be dealt with. And you must confront the things that you continually and purposely do. 
the challenge is being laid out today? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, this is the moment you listen. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Woo, glory. Thank you, Jesus for the, the word that we have read. Heavenly Father, let this be a ministering moment, a time of meditation, a reflection of where we're at with you. And God, let my voice be yours and let myself be out of the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Point one, know who owns your house. I'm not talking about your physical house or the property deeds that you may have. I'm not talking about the material things in your life. I'm not talking about the possessions that you have. I'm talking about your body, you. You, you need to know and understand who owns it. Because I believe if we come to that realization moment, in fact, really, who owns this? You might treat it better. Jesus paid the price for our sins. He paid that price. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, that he went to the cross, and three days later he rose from the dead. He was resurrected in a new body. He conquered death and hell. He took the keys of Hades and he delivered us in righteousness that we might be saved. If you believe that and that is your heart with Jesus, then you receive his spirit. That's true. And so those that believe have to understand that once you accept Jesus Christ, it is not the end. For Jesus said to follow me, pick up your cross, and come with me. And then he also tells us to walk in the what? Come on, shout it out, somebody. Don't be afraid, that's not a trick question. Spirit. Walk in the spirit. If you choose to walk like I am now, it's because I either unconsciously or consciously chose to walk. Sometimes we try to choose to walk and our body says No. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Come on. You wake up and the body's just like, no. <laughs> you choose to walk. Therefore, we must choose to walk in the Spirit. You must understand that when we accept Jesus Christ, we become the temple of the Lord. See, it's a lot of times we associate church we associate the buildings, the structure as the place of holiness. I have heard people say, oh, i got to watch my language. I'm on the property of the church. <laughs> yes, you should, praise the Lord. And that should be what the church is known for, amen? But does that mean you can't watch your language at work? Does that mean you don't watch your language in front of your kids? Come on. We must walk in the Spirit. It is a decision point. Not only have we accepted Jesus, now we have His Spirit, and now we have to be with it. And you can't avoid this. Jesus paid the price, Romans 3, 21 and 26. I just want to point out that He did pay this price. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through the faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. Point to your neighbor. That's me. Tell him this is me. For there is no difference for all. Point to your neighbor. This is me. Say it. Say it. This is me. 
have sinned in all. I'm going to add all right here. Fall short. Point your neighbor and say, this is me. Of the glory of God. So we all identify with sin and falling short. Amen? I'm getting you to understand that you need to know who you are. And what is God trying to do in your life? 2024, in my spirit, will be challenging for everyone. I can't speak of any dreams of gloom and doom. That's not, that's not what God revealed to me. He did reveal to me, though, your spirit needs to be with me. It's time that adults in this room represent what you believe. I am setting forth a challenge to stop doing the things of the former lust, the flesh, the desires, the wills, and do the things of the Spirit. Letting go of the former past and clinging to the hand of Jesus. If you want fullness, if you want spiritual fullness, walk in the Spirit. A lot of us are incomplete, and you're on the empty side of things. You're not as full as you like to be, and you wonder why there's so much joy or a struggle without joys, without happiness. And I dare say, if you would challenge, accept this challenge, and just reflect today and meditate on what I'm saying, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me, is that you might not be as close to Him as you thought you were. And that's okay. Sorry, online, I might have jumped on that one for you. That's okay if you're not where you need to be. But understand this. Choose to walk where you should be going. Being justified freely, verse 24, by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as appropriation, a paid, a down payment by his blood through faith, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over, ooh, thank you, Lord, the sins that were previously committed. Thank you, Jesus. You should say thank you, Lord, to that. To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. The ransom was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are now owned by God. That's why we find in 1 Corinthians 6, the question is to a believer, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? They were believers, but they were struggling with the concept of allowing the Spirit to live in them and allow the temple of the Lord to to be upon them. See, you could walk around claiming that Jesus is your Lord, but not follow his spirit. You can. Can I tell you something? I'll give you a testimony. I did that. I'm not immune to that. And neither are you. You can be a believer, but not walk in the spirit. I ran from this pulpit. I was not walking in the Spirit. I ran from my calling. I was not walking in the Spirit. I ran from the things that God wanted me to do. Therefore, was I in His will and walking with Him? Answer, no. And deep down inside, I believe each and every one of us, if we honestly give a reflection to our heart, know that you know whether or not you're walking in the Spirit. Because to walk in the Spirit means to yield to the Spirit, to His presence, to His decision-making, to his, to his love and mercy and compassion. The world doesn't even have compassion for our brothers and sisters. We judge immediately, yet we say we love Jesus. I dare say you're not walking in the Spirit. 
Because if he was walking in the spirit, you would have compassion, just as Jesus did. And that is just a nugget off to the side. It's not on my notes today. We need to walk in the spirit. Guys, we're so good about thinking about our physical health, some of us. I don't look like it, but I do think about it. That's why I said I'm so good about thinking about it. I didn't say I was so good about acting about it, okay? I don't, I'm not a liar. Lord, help me. I'll challenge myself. I told Suzanne, I need to drop a few. I'm going to think about my body. And then the holidays hit. And you think about that, right? I'm sorry, Jessica, I brought food into it. Help me, Lord. She wrote it down. But we're good about noticing our outward appearance. Many of us, I dare say, spent a little bit of time this morning preparing for today. Not the guys. You all know who I'm talking about, okay? I have a son, and I just want to laugh about it. He woke up out of bed and put a shirt on. He's good. He's good. It doesn't matter. It didn't affect his playing ability, praise the Lord. But he wasn't interested in dolling himself up today, but he does look good. It's natural to him. Some of us spend time doing that. We purposely look in the mirror and reflect on how we can look better. We choose different wardrobes, and we choose different outfits, and we prepare ourselves, and, and we study this stuff, and we, we read books about being healthier, and we take classes about being healthier, and we dive into things, and we try to study and discern the science about it, right? And you're like, oh, I want to do this because it affects my metabolism, and it's going to bring this down. Well, okay. Do you spend as much time thinking of how the Spirit of the Lord can be at home in the temple of the Lord, which is in you as much as we do thinking about the things of this world. See, a temple is sacred. We believe, and I know for a fact Pastor Petter believes, that this sanctuary is sacred. And we treat it as such. And we try to treat it as such. And when things are mistreated, Pastor Pay is going to tell us. Amen. Because this is the house of the Lord. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you individually? This isn't your wife's thing or your spouse. This is the responsibility of you. As an individual, men, it's not your wife's duty to clean your temple. You might think, it, you might think otherwise on your house. I ain't going to go there. That's between you and them. Y'all fight it out later. But you better help. I'm going to tell the men right now, you better help. If you want a good relationship with your spouse, here's a little nugget. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. I think that's one of those commandments that we should follow. Come on. Ladies, you need to say amen. I'm trying to help you out today, and you're not helping me. You have an obligation, men. This is a challenge. I'm dropping challenges today. You have an obligation, men, to walk in the Spirit. You, individually are supposed to represent the temple of the Lord and all that comes with that. That means identifying the, the things that are defiling the temple. What you see on your cell phones, what you might watch in secret, what you might say in secret, what you might do in secret is a defilement to your temple. And how can the Spirit of the Lord work in your life when you won't give Him room to work? See, we want the glory of God to move in our services. How many of us let Him move in you first? Has to happen. 
you've got to let the Spirit work in the life of you. You've got to understand that He's in charge. He owns the house. So we must set aside a holiness in our life. Watching what we say and do. Being mindful of our reactions and our offenses. Guys, I'm preaching not to a choir, not to uh, just you individual. I'm preaching to me as a minister. I'm preaching to my family. I'm preaching to my friends that as the Spirit of the Lord is in you, you must identify that which is not of the Spirit and kick it out. Because if you don't, it will wreck your life. It will bring you further and further away from Christ, even though you said you believe but you allowed a defilement to take place in the temple. Haven't we heard in the Old Testament when defilement takes place in the temple, what happens? God had no place for it, right? When there was defilement in his temple, those that did it, that meant they died. (laughs) Praise God that he's not in that, that business of striking us dead. For a defilement today by the blood of Jesus, paid ransom. So know that your body is his temple. We need his presence more than any other time, y'all. We need men of God with the spirit of the Lord in them, walking in the spirit. Why? Because it brings forth honesty and integrity. The two most needed attributes of a man today. If you want your family to follow you, have you been honest and do you have integrity? Because they will follow you. If you are honest and you have integrity, the Spirit of the Lord will make that happen in your life. That is is my spirit challenge. It's for my youth. It's for my friends and family. Thankful that Jesus said, I'm going to help you with this. We know he said, I'm going to help you with this because he sent his comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit because we need that comforter. Amen. When we lose lost loved ones, we need a comforter. That's of the, not of this world. Because as many people might say, they know what you're going through. The truth of it is, they may and probably don't. But the Spirit of the Lord does. He knows exactly where your heart's at. I thank God that he sent his son, and then the son said, I will pray for you, a helper. John chapter 14, 15 and 18 says this. If you love me and keep my commandments. See, you have to actually walk with Jesus. You have to actually do something in this walk with Christ. It can't just be an altar acceptance, and that's it. You have to love him and then keep the commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He says this, I will not leave you orphans. Sometimes I believe we need to hear that. And I thank the Lord. He will not leave me orphan. He says, I will come back for you. And he is. And until that day Jesus returns, we have his spirit that is with us. But you consciously have to choose to walk in it. And for 2024, you need to choose to walk in the spirit. In fact, it's not just for this year. It is every day. We just sang a song that said, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. That incense is our praise and our worship. Day and night, night and day, we will let our praise and worship rise. We will let the Spirit of God, who lives in us, day and night, night and day, work in our lives. He owns the temple that's in you. So you must listen to the Lord. You must read the word. 
How can the Holy Spirit bring forth to remembrance all things that Jesus said if you don't know what Jesus said? Come on. You have to hear what Jesus said and build your faith. Faith comes by hearing what? The Word of God. You have to hear what He says. You've got to apply it in your life. You've got to read what was said. You've got to know what was said. And therefore, in those moments of struggle, in those moments of tiredness and weakness, the Holy Spirit will pray through you and bring forth to remembrance the Scripture of the Lord. And that will prophesy out of your mouth truth and healing, joy, peace, happiness, goodness. When I was sick in body, I'm not, I, had, I had fevers, I had all that, the flu, whatever it was, I don't know. Enemy does, he's evil. I kick him to the side. But as I was praying, I didn't have to pray. But the Spirit of the Lord prayed through me. See, when you walk in the Spirit, this is going to my next point, you need to let the Spirit of the Lord work in your life. And as we let other things work in our life, as we let the, uh, the, the different things we like to do, activities that we like to do, the different uh, whatever it may be, if you like to shoot guns, great. If you like to ride bikes, great. If you like these activities, if you like sports, if you like these things, if you like shopping, come on. You like those activities, you, you let those things happen because you enjoy them and you want to be there. I am asking you to let the Holy Spirit work in your life because you need it. In fact, you need that more than all those other things and even the ones you might have thought of. Even the ones I failed to, my youth done made notes of which ones I didn't get. That they were thinking of, you should have known me, Pastor Tim. Come on. But they, they understand that there's things we like, there's things we do, because it's an enjoyment in our life. I'm telling you right now, you need to find the Holy Ghost. And it needs to be continual walk with him. I know when it's empty. I know when I've walked out of the spirit I think you do too at times even now I'm challenging you to meditate on that are you continually doing this we need that divine helper in some translations he's referred to as an advocate we need that advocate at work amen we need that advocate at work my goodness brother Eric knows what I'm talking about we work together. <clears throat> we need that advocate at work, that helper. Man, you, you need that advocate in your marriage. Yeah. I mean, again, the Holy Spirit prays for things that you don't understand or, or can't pray for. And if you have a problem with your wife, you better be praying in the Spirit. Because he's praying for her and up for you, the things that you don't understand. And if my guys under, relate, please. There's times we may not understand, but the Holy Spirit does. Uh, pray in the spirit, y'all. He's got you. He's got you. He'll help you out. You need him in your family. This is a family service, and I love the, the that we move to that. It's not just a youth Sunday. It's the family service. It's where we come together with all the generations represented. And the Spirit of the Lord needs to be in every home and on every family because it moves you to a better place as you raise children. Is it hard to raise children? Yeah. Will everything go according to plan? No. If you have any kids, you know what I'm talking about. Man, you better have an advocate. You better have the Spirit of the Lord working in your family. You need them. The students coming up, the children in Children's Church and Jam Kids today need men of God and women of God to have the Spirit of the Lord in them to represent how the Spirit works in them. So we stop having generations that are turning away from the presence of God. 
and are fearful of the things of the Spirit. Because there are many gifts, as many of you know, of the Spirit. Not only do you walk in the Spirit, but you yield to the Spirit. And when you yield to the Spirit, you yield to the anointing and power that He brings to your life, and He is ready to gift you today. Freely given unto those that seek it. Jude tells us to pray in the Spirit, Jude 1 and 20. We can bring that up. But you, beloved, thank you, I thank you, Jude, for saying I'm beloved. I needed that encouragement today. Building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. It's a requirement as a believer to pray in the Holy Spirit. Pastor Tim, what's that mean? Yield to the Spirit of the Lord. Yield and pray in the Spirit. I think sometimes we're comfortable with God and the things and the nature of God. I think sometimes we're comfortable with Jesus and the things and the nature of Jesus Christ. But are you comfortable with the nature and the things of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? You see, he is part of the Trinity. He's a person. He has attributes. He understands. He can be grieved. And what that means is he knows when you don't want him. So you choose not to be with his presence. The temple is empty. You're not satisfied in life because you have not yielded to all of what God wants you to yield to. That's one of the hardest things to do is yield to something that is unseen. Yield to that spirit that oftentimes tells you not to do that dumb thing. And you hear that still small voice, and it's in contrary to your flesh. That's his job. And you have to yield to that, Tim? Pastor Tim, you want me to yield to that? I'm challenging young adults today. I am challenging youth today. I'm challenging our, our older generation, the faithful ones, praise God, to yield to the Holy Spirit. If you begin to yield this year more so than you did last year, you will see more of God's presence manifest itself in all that you do. Man, I think of Peter and John. They had a choice to make as they walked into the temple when the beggar begged for alms. Will you pass anything off to me so I can have some money to make it in this world? They had to choose in that moment, do I break out the purse, little bag, leather bag, whatever it was, and pass along some coins? Or do I listen? See, they had to choose to. Think about this. They had to listen and yield to what the Holy Spirit was telling them, which was crazy. It would have stunned all those that saw. What's Peter say in the famous line? Silver and gold I have not. But what I do have is the Spirit of the Lord. That is in me. Rise up and take your bed and receive it by faith. What happened to that person? They were healed. Because you, as an individual, yielded. See, a lot of times we expect healing to come, but somebody in the church isn't yielding to the Spirit. It's a challenge. I'm, 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 I'm not, it's real quiet. It was like pins and needles in here. I'm sorry. This is challenge day. I'm challenging you. Because if our church wants to do more in the community of Manchester, if our church wants to do greater things that God is calling this church to do, and I believe he is, then it's going to take individuals that are walking in the Spirit. Because when you walk in the Spirit, you don't get offended so easily. 
when it's not what you thought it should be. When you walk in the Spirit, you're willing to forgive when they won't. When you walk in the Spirit, you're, you're willing to love those that don't look, smell, talk, or are part of your clique, your group, right? You begin to love people as Jesus loved them. The greatest thing I love about Jesus is he was for the people. He didn't go and hang out with those that weren't, uh, that weren't loving and kind and, and uh, all the Pharisees. and He didn't hang out with them. He said, these people don't see me. I'm going to those that need hope. I'm going to those that need love. I'm going to those that need healing, that need a touch from something greater than what was established in the temple of that day. And we are called to do the same. We are called to walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 26. If you can give me just a few more minutes, we'll wrap this up. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. This is Galatians 5, verse 19 to 26. And I believe some of you will check off these, that which you have done. I do not want to know. But I believe we can meditate on this and like, oh, mm, okay, yeah. The works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Can you identify with the list? Probably so in some, some portion of that list. So you know the sin that had to be paid for and bought. But here's what I love about the Spirit. Remember, it's a contrary to the flesh. It's the opposite of these things. Amen? Praise God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. We need some patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control. Man, I'm telling you what, if you fly off the handle all the time, let me remind you one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. You haven't reached that level up yet. You need to get there. And, and notice this list is a lot. Are you applying or doing all that? Maybe not today, but as you continually walk in the Spirit, as you walk with him through life, these different attributes of fruit begin to develop you. And guess what? You become a full tree that is good and, and looks good and it's bearing good fruits. And you begin to represent who? Christ Jesus. You begin to represent Jesus as you draw closer to him and walk in that spirit Luke 6, 43 and 45. Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 45 says, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit. The lie of this world is that you can have a bad tree bear good fruit. That's how the devil twists it. Right? You can still do bad things. And, oh, man, your fruit's still good. It's wrong. It's a lie. Don't listen to it. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man, listen, out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. If you are walking in the Spirit, then the fruit that you shall bear will be good. The Word says that. Amen. It says it. 
If in 2024 you choose to take up the spirit challenge and, and you choose to be obedient, to understand that your temple is the Lord's and he bought and paid a price for you, you are his. And if you allow that to be a, a, a daily reminder and walk in the spirit, you will bear good fruit and it will be evident. And the fruit that you bear, it can be taken of and partaken of with your friends and family, they'll realize there's something about you that is good. You ever been, like, seeing that great fruit on a tree? And there's a desire to go pick it. There's a desire to, I mean, if our apple tree, I, well, I think it was cursed, okay? I'm just going to, can I just be funny real quick? We had an apple tree in the yard for 10 years, didn't do anything. I planned, I put the pollinators around it. Doug's got apple trees. We got the pollinators around it. Man, that tree wasn't doing nothing. And I walked up to it one day, and I spoke to the tree. I was like, Jesus did it. I'm doing it. I said, I'm cutting you down if you don't bear fruit this year. I did. My wife's like, oh, my gosh. My neighbors, if they heard it, probably like, oh, boy. But I told that tree, I'm tired of you not producing. You're going after this season. You know that tree had the most fruit on it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making that up. It bared a full body of apples. And I was like, man, my words are powerful. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I tar- started telling my kids, and that didn't work out, you know. <laughs> but the tree is designed to bear good fruit. You are grafted in to the body of Christ. You're designed to bear good fruit. But when you don't walk in the spirit, we know what's going to happen. If you walk in the flesh, it's going to be bad fruit. So the challenge is to be in his spirit. And lastly, you are designed to be in the spirit. You bring up Genesis 2-7, please. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. See, God's own breath breathed into you. We know God knew us before we were born because when Jeremiah struggled to be the called prophet he was supposed to be, He said, I'm not worthy as a young man to do what you called me to be. And God said, excuse me. See, I knew you before you was born. I actually called you before you took your breath that I gave you. And so when you say I'm not worthy enough, that is kind of defiling the temple I gave you. Don't tell, don't don't, don't speak I'm unworthy when God designed you. You are worthy and you are able And if you let the Spirit of the Lord be in your life, you are coming into proper design with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Spirit, the presence of the Lord had to be taken away and had to go into a temple on the earth, a tabernacle on the earth. But when Jesus came, he did what? He destroyed that veil and it fell. And no longer with the Spirit of God confined to a place on this earth, but rather given to you. You are a steward of the Spirit of God that resides in you. He lives in you. So be that steward. Romans 8, and um, I think I'm grabbing verse 9 on this as well. I apologize. Romans 8, verse 9 through 11. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any, let me just restate this. This is catching my own thoughts right now. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. You got to let it dwell in you, y'all. Got to. The challenge is being laid out. You got to let the spirit of the Lord indwell you. And listen and yield to it. 
It, it will change your life. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, if you're a young parent in the room, hear me out. I've been there. I've done that. Struggled through that. I didn't let the Spirit of the Lord. I wasn't yielding. I wasn't letting it move in my life. I wasn't fully. See, my, my whole family was like, oh, I can't believe it. No, it's true. You know what I'm talking about, family? When you don't fully let the Spirit of the Lord lead, when you don't fully let the Spirit of the Lord work in your life, you're not fulfilled. So young people in the room today, do that this year. Yield to the Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit in your life. And you will see things undone that you didn't think was possible. You will see mountains moved that you thought was too high to climb. God doesn't intend for you to struggle over a climbing a mountain. He just moves it out of the way. Just have faith. In closing, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, or 7, verses 12. Can the worship team come? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that's us, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, y'all know what I'm talking about, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body of the, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us. But praise God, life is in you. Oh, Holy Spirit. He's in you, and he's working in you. Will you yield to him this year, to the fullness of his spirit? Oftentimes, we develop ceilings in our temple that weren't designed to be there. See, the temple is God's. Our body has been paid by ransom by Jesus Christ. He defines the dimensions of your temple, not you. So if we prop up a ceiling, a cap per se, and we try to convince ourselves this is where the Spirit of the Lord indwells, you are limiting the ability of the Spirit of God to take you to higher places. See, Paul told us in Corinthians to seek out the best gifts of the Spirit, to not be limited, to not be self-contained, to not put a cap in your or a ceiling in your temple because it is the Lord's. It is God's. So my challenge for you this year is to not limit him. To not say, you know what? That's not for me. Because if you would reflect at this moment right now, and if you ever said that gift is not for me, deep down inside, I'm almost certain the Spirit of the Lord disagrees with you. Because the Word says that the Spirit of the Lord is the one who chooses to give out the gifting, not you. Remember, you've been bought and paid. The temple of the Lord is His. So don't allow yourself to be stuck in the coming year in a self-fabricated temple that wasn't what God wanted you to be. Can we stand I have a book at my house. It's called The Holy Spirit in You. It was written by Derek Prince. And it specific talks about Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, specifically the gift of love. It was the first thing, the first fruit that I mentioned. In fact, Paul tells us the greatest gift of all is what? Love. God is in the word is described as what? Love. Here's what he says. Love, the primary 
therefore other fruit is list, the primary of the fruits because it's listed first. There's always intentionality when somebody writes. The word doesn't contradict itself. Love is first. After that, joy is love rejoicing. Peace is love resting. Long suffering is love forbearing. Kindness is love serving others. Goodness is love seeking the best for others. Faithfulness is a love keeping its promises. Gentleness is a love ministering to the hurt of others. And self control is love in control. I'm fixing to call an altar call that's not normal. Remember, this is a challenge Sunday. I didn't run this by Pastor Petty, but I'm sure he's okay with it. This is part of our fasting time where we purposely choose to let go of things in our, that are of the flesh to allow what? The Spirit of the Lord place in our lives. So this is a challenge to you guys. So if every head can bow and every eye close, I want to go through a few questions here. And I just want you to meditate on these. I want you to think about these questions for the coming year. Just listen. Let's have an honest reflection of what the Word was said today. And, and truthfully, deep down inside, let's think about these things. Are you allowing the fullness of the Holy Spirit to work in your life personally? Or are there self-manufactured ceilings of limit? Are you yielded to the Spirit? Or are you posing, imposing your own ways and thoughts and, and things and how to do things? Are you growing in the gifts of the Spirit? Do we see a yielding of fruit on your tree? Is it evident? Is it seen or is it hidden? Do you have fruit worthy to share to your family, to your children, to your friends, your spouses, your loved ones? And are you committed to letting the Spirit of God work in your life? Are you committed to letting go, control, and yielding, allowing, and finally expecting more of His presence? Lord, we thank you for this word today to remind us that the body that was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ is yours. And God, I'm thankful that that debt of sin was paid, that I might receive Jesus as my Savior and as the Spirit giveth your presence in my life. Lord, let my temple be yours. That's our prayer today, God, that our temple is yours. And the Spirit that you have sent to this earth to be our advocate and comforter will lead God and direct us. Guys, you can open your eyes. Here's the altar call. The challenge is set forth. If this word has spoken to you today and you want to dedicate this upcoming year to be in the spirit of the Lord, it's a commitment. And you say, Pastor Tim, I'm already there. Are you fully there? Because God's limit is not instructed by what we think we're at. It's how he gives more and more. It's his movement. But we have to be yielding to whatever that looks like. So if these words have spoken to you, regardless of your position in Christ today, or where you stand, this altar is open to make that commitment in prayer. And this is a concert prayer moment. This is a Pastor Tim praying that for you individually because I'm not your temple and you aren't mine. This is your temple that you have to take as a steward of. And so I'm challenging you to everyone to take just a moment today and meet me in this altar to dedicate a 
commitment to the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If that's you today, if you feel a commitment in your life, will you come? Will you commit as they sing? Will you pray in in the Spirit? Will you yield to the Spirit today? Will you allow that commitment to take place? It's so easy, Lord. I need you. I need your spirit, Lord God. I need to be committed to you. And where I have failed, reveal those things to me. Reveal that position of my heart where I withheld your working. And God, I pray, Lord, that you remove it in the name of Jesus. And fill my heart with your spirit and your presence. Because, Lord, we want to draw all closer to you. We want your presence evident in our life. We want our workplaces to see a man of God, a woman of God that is in the Spirit. We want our homes, Lord God, to be evidence that the Spirit of the Lord is working and ministering and every father and every mother is walking in your presence. Lord, we want our children to be in your presence, to be in your Spirit. Lord God, we want them to see the fruit evident in our own lives. We commit that to you, Lord Jesus. We commit it, Heavenly Father, as a body of believers that we understand the price of atonement. We understand the position of our body. We understand who bought and paid for us. We understand what you gave for us. Your only begotten Son that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. We believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and our redemption of our sins. And we accept the responsibility as a temple custodian to allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in our lives, to take us from places where we didn't think was possible, but yield and let Him lead us to what is that of supernatural, that of not this world, but it's of your heavenly place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the commitment we have seen here today. You are so good to us. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, three in one, working in our lives to move us closer to your kingdom that you want us to be a part of. We thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're here today and there's a specific prayer need that you have, I would love to pray with you. I thank you, Lord, for the commitment that we have seen today. Even if you chose not to come to the altar, but you chose to commit to the Holy Spirit, I thank you. thank you. And I challenge you to be committed to what you pray today. And will you challenge me to do the same? Committed to allow the Holy Spirit to have his place in our lives this year. Let it be evident. Let it be seen. The world is struggling. God's kingdom to be willing vessels with boldness of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I call you faithful for the promises you So
Your friend will be with you this year. Pastor Petty asked that we refocus this month in our fasting to allow the Spirit of the Lord to move. We want God to move. We want God to bless this, not only this church and the property thereof, but the community in it, the schools around us, all the different extracurricular activities that our students are involved with, sports, the music, the choirs. We want the Spirit of the Lord to show up on stage, on court, on the field, in those individuals. Amen. We want His presence to be seen and evident. So as you fast, pray in your secret place. The Word tells us to go to a place unseen. I challenge you to do that to find a place of quietness. And that's hard to do in a family of seven, I know. And so when the family went to Doug's to eat supper, that's my quiet time. I was like, I'm staying behind. I need quietness. It's hard sometimes. I get it. But maybe it's in your car. Just don't text while doing this. But maybe it's in your car. You can pray. I think we've all been talking in our car, amen? I know you can pray then. That might be your secret place. Nobody knows it, but the people driving by thinking you're crazy. Who cares? They don't know what you're doing. That was the point of it. They don't know what you're doing. You don't do it for accolades or show. You do it, and you pray in a secret place so that the Lord will openly reward you. So pray fast dedicate time. As Pastor Petty has mentioned before, fasting doesn't mean kill yourself. It doesn't. Like some of you don't need to fast too much because you're on too many medications, okay? You need to be smart with this, but fast what you can. And typically it's something that is in the way of what the Spirit of the Lord wants to do. And you know what that is. And I believe the Spirit of God will reveal that to you. 
and show you what you need to do. So continue to do this at his request that we continue to remember the vision banquet. The date has changed, shifted slightly just for planning purposes. I believe it's February 4th, is that correct now? But here's what you're going to do during this fasting time. You're praying for Pastor Petty. He needs your prayers for the shepherd of this flock. Can only go so far, and the Spirit of the Lord's got to carry him. And I know he yields to the Spirit. So you're praying that vision be unlocked and released in his ministry. And whatever that looks like. If we as a body of believers would stand in agreement for the vision direction of this church, Pastor Petty can walk up here with all confidence and boldness, knowing what the Lord wants to do. Because the people of God have surrounded him in concert prayer and are with him in this vision. This isn't just his vision. This is the Lord's vision. And you have a partake uh, ability to partake in that by praying for the vision direction of this church. So I, I challenge you as well to do that. Any more challenges? If you need another challenge, I'm, I'll be after service. I'll challenge you. I'll challenge my youth to a race. Let's do it. You don't get beat by an old man. But we love you. We appreciate you. Yes. I agree. Thank you for that. So, can I get the elders of this church, the council, teachers of this church, if you're part of the ministries of this church, whether it be Sunday schools or, or children's ministry, you need to be the ones that are raising the hands of Moses. Oh, would you raise your hands, Pastor? Would you support him? Would you support his hands? Oh, the Holy Spirit is releasing. That's the word I'm hearing. He's releasing vision. He's releasing the purpose for this church. For we have prayed in constant prayer as a body. It will be released. I believe it in my spirit. It's being released. Thank you guys for coming today. Please remember tonight, there is a... You know what? We, I don't like to, t word, to use the term senior service because this is a service for all. Because what they do is they have a time of worship in word, and they get back into the roots of the church of God. Come on. A little two-stepping, a little spirit-loving. See, this church was founded on the Holy Spirit, the concert of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Come tonight, and you'll be blessed. I truly believe that.
Remember, next week we've got a fundraiser, so don't fast chicken, cheesy chicken and rice with some queso on the side. I'll have a flyer being posted on social media. There will be an event you can share, um, but I believe the plates are running $10. It's a good portion. Dessert and drink. And then we'll have some kid-sized stuff that you can get as well for 6 or $7 there. So just support the youth. It goes to benefit them. Amen? Brother Jeremy, will you close us in prayer?